Hey, what is going on, SMT Nation? It's the SMT. Thanks for tuning in to watch this edition of the channel. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at a topic that I have got a lot of questions on. Uh, people in comment sections, people have shared the articles with me on this topic. And I just want to give people a better idea as to how T-Mobile's configurations and network rollout is going in terms of how they're upgrading the network in certain markets like New York City, where a lot of the recent articles, uh, you know, boasting about the network are indicating that we're seeing huge improvements in download speeds and overall performance and capacity. So instead of, you know, having to answer the question over and over again and addressing it, I just thought I'd make a video and uh, you guys could have a, a much you know, more clear idea of how they're doing this and how they're configuring things uh, in New York City and probably the rest of the U.S. eventually. Uh, before I get into the specifics of these network operations, I do want to make you guys aware of some of the things going on with the community. We've got links in the description box for the following items, the SMT Patreon page, also the Twitter handle at Sneed Tech, and then we have the Megadon.net invite code, the social media platform of the future. Never need another social media platform ever again. No algorithms, no ads, and no tracking. Megadon.net. So... In looking at a lot of the articles, and I f actually found this um, this table here, this this figure about what's going on in New York City as T-Mobile continues to build out what they call their layer cake. Now, the the layer cake analogy is pretty simple: three major types of connectivity for the T-Mobile network, and pretty much every carrier for that matter. You have low band, mid band, and then also millimeter wave spectrum assets, which are utilized for all different facets of the network. Low band, really designed for extended use coverage, propagates really well, gives range and coverage to networks, also offers, you know, in-building penetration from tower sites. Uh, this is usually kind of the, the lifeline of a network because if it's useless indoors, it's really one dimensional. So really important stuff. Also, we have the mid band, which is the second layer of the layer cake analogy from Neville Ray and his team over at T-Mobile. Anyways, the mid band is kind of a best of both worlds scenario uh, where it gives you coverage indoors somewhat. And well, it's I mean, it's pretty good. Mid band seems to work well uh, in most cases. Um, not as good as low band, but it does offer pretty good connectivity, but it also gives some capacity and throughput. And uh, this is why it's so valuable. And this is essentially why T-Mobile merged with Sprint. And then you have the millimeter wave, which is that top layer of the layer cake. And it's the millimeter wave and millimeter wave offers the greatest capacity, the fastest download speeds and things of that nature. Uh, but it's it's the most limited in terms of propagation, in-building penetration, and stuff like that. So uh, there's definitely a place for each of these assets, right? But um, the way that T-Mobile is approaching this layer cake right now is they're still trying to build out their 600 megahertz, their low band, the bottom layer of the cake. Then it's the mid band, the second layer, which is the 2.5 gigahertz from the Sprint merger. Now, in terms of T-Mobile's huge improvement in download speeds in New York City in particular, what they're doing is they are upgrading their tower sites with 2.5 gigahertz spectrum from the Sprint merger. And it is the driving force of these network upgrades. Anyways, the advantage of the midband in this case for T-Mobile is the fact that not only will it work outdoors and offer, you know, connectivities that way, but it still works indoors. So it'll help basically everybody in all situations. Now, in a place like New York City, it's really about the speeds and capacity because that's really hard on a network when you have so many people in such a um, specific geographical range or region. So... Uh, data from Ookla, and I went ahead and I put up the uh, the data here, indicates that in January, uh, I believe network performances showed about a 79 megabit per second mean download speed. And it actually dipped a little bit into March, and something tells me that's correlated to the pandemic. But since that pandemic dip, we have seen steady improvements in download speeds for T-Mobile. And I think there's two things happening there. Number one, obviously it's the 2.5 gigahertz, uh, you know, access that T-Mobile now has, which is from the Sprint merger. And then there's also the fact that there's some additional 600 megahertz assets being used as well. We've got Dish, which has allowed T-Mobile to utilize their licenses, as well as Columbia Capital and other locations. So I think it's a combination of those two things. But for the sake of this video, let's take a look at the 2.5 gigahertz. Anyways, 
a little bit about New York City. The testing is taking place in Manhattan because this is a specific region where these network upgrades have already happened. Uh, the testing has been done between May 5th and 19th, and we see there is an indication of some clear improvements in um, in the download speeds. They are utilizing 40 megahertz of the 2.5 gigahertz spectrum. Uh, they are utilizing it in the NR, which is the 5G application. And it looks like Ericsson Gear is the mechanism by which they are deploying through the hardware and they are seeing peak speeds of this connection at 541 megabits per second and um, I mean this is good to see now this is a theoretical it's a potential speed in real world application there's all types of variables there's obstacles there's data traffic there's interference there's a lot of different things there but it is good to see that this is a fast connection. And of course, once the network load gets there, we're talking about New York City here, obviously those speeds per channel are going to dip. Um, speeds have improved, uh, not just because of the actual spectrum they're utilizing, but it's also being indicated that the spectral efficiency has improved, which essentially means they're getting better speeds uh, than however Sprint had it configured. So they're using the same amount of spectrum, but getting better speeds, or they're using less spectrum and getting the same speeds, however you want to look at it. Uh, now, in terms of what's the difference between T-Mobile and Sprint and how they're deploying the 2.5, it looks like there's a difference in performance based on the 256 QAM and MIMO technology improvements that T-Mobile seems to be mastering. Uh, the Northeast Village of New York is seeing 60 megahertz of 2.5, and R41 that are achieving speeds of 900 megabits per second, which is really good to see. Uh, they're combining this connection along with N71, which is their 600 megahertz for 5G. They're also utilizing LAA, which is unlicensed spectrum, uh, very high frequency uh, LT connectivity. They're also doing LT band 71 and they're doing LT band 66 along with these connections and they're achieving about 1.2 megabits per second on the peak download so it's good to see that we finally gone over that one gigabit per second which is great but there's something i do know and that's once the network traffic is there and people are connecting to n41 things are going to be a little bit different so you can have all the theory theoretical speeds and capacity you want but people don't really have 5g devices right now so it's kind of concerning in that this is kind of where they're at for their maximum. I'm going to want to see this actually come up a little bit because it's not going to stay at 1.2 gigabits per second. In fact, it's probably going to dip below 500 megabits per second very consistently because, you know, we're talking about basically just the Samsung Galaxy S line, the S20, the S20 Plus and the S20 Ultra. Other than that, I mean, there's very few devices that are actually connecting to N41. I know that... um the OnePlus 8 will as well. Uh, you know, there's some other phones, but not many people have these phones. These phones just come out this year. They're very expensive, upwards of a thousand to thirteen or fourteen hundred dollars. So that being said, you know, while these phones are taking advantage of about 100 megahertz of connection bandwidth, once the devices start to pile up on the network and they get access to it, those peak speeds are going to drop. So they're going to have to continue to maximize the potential of the network. This is encouraging to Z, and I'm very positive about it. Not only are they have to continue to optimize the network and you know improve on the spectral efficiency, and they're probably going to have to increase bandwidth for all these connections, but they're also going to have to do it at a larger scale. East Village, right? Um, parts of Manhattan, they're just going to have to continue to go beyond that. So it is going to take some time. It's going to take a huge amount of investment. But this is how they're doing it now. So if you are connected to these connections, that's kind of what you would be getting access to. Anyways, if you yourself are in this region or you've tested the network personally and you have some, you know, insight or some feedback you'd like to give, you know, sound off in the comment section below. Let me know what you are seeing, what your experiences are like. Uh, or if you know about these connections very intimately because you've seen screenshots, you've looked at the connection logs and service modes, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Go ahead and sound off in the comments section below. Let me know what you think uh, in terms of usage and application and things of that nature. Or if you're a network tech enthusiast and you're familiar with the technologies, of course, let your, you know, let your voice be heard. Or if you're just excited about the technology and how it's kind of proceeding, you know, go ahead and let me know. So uh, very excited to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, voice of the people, the SMT Nation, uh, go ahead and drop me that line. 
If you appreciated this video, found it informative, or just enjoyed it, please do like this video. You know, make sure you rate it for me and also share it to your favorite social media platforms. That would be amazing. Thank you in advance for that. Also, if it's your first time here, welcome to you. Consider joining the SMT Nation. Hit that subscribe button and also activate the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload from the SMT. And I think we'll go ahead and hashtag T-Mobile 5G Layer Cake. And uh, that's if you're a real one and you watch this all the way through. Uh, anyways, if you are not ready to leave the channel just yet, want to check out some other videos, I've hand selected some for you. Check those out here on the screen. And that wraps this one up. I hope you have a great rest of the day. I'm the SMT and I will catch you guys on the next video. Peace.